just step right into this because I don't, I don't want to be pressed on time with what, what the Lord has to, to offer you. You have your Bibles turned to Psalms 119. Psalms 119, 33 through 40. Psalms 119, 40, 33 through 40. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Psalms 119, 33 through 40. I'm going to read out the message this tonight. And, uh, you know, it's, I, I read King James message, New Living Translation. I read a lot of the different translations, and, and I and I would usually preach out of the King James, I'll be honest with you. But here lately, I've been just reading some of these other ones, and, and I'm trying to bring our messages down to where we can we can understand King James. Oh, don't let me get it wrong. But sometimes a, a different little translation puts a different little light on things. So I'm going to read out the message here. You can follow along with King James. God teach me lessons for living so I can stay the course. Now this is Paul, I mean uh, uh, David Rodgers. Give me insight so I can do what you tell me. My whole life, one long obedient response. Guide me down the road of your commandments. Well, that should be our prayer. Guide me down the road of your commandments. I love traveling this freeway. Give me a bent for your words of wisdom and not for pulling or pelling up loot, piling up loot. Divert my eyes from toys and trinkets and, uh, and they, uh, leave me on the pilgrim way. Affirm your promise to me. Promise me to do all you do fear you. Then deflect your harsh words of my uh, critics, but, but what you say is always so good. See how hunger I am for your counsel. Preserve my life through the righteous ways. And today I just want just the very first verse, verse 33. Teach me my lessons for living so I can stay the course. So I can stay the course. Today I want to just talk to you a little bit. Now, don't get me wrong, but I want to preach on Jack Sparrow's compass. Does anybody know who Jack Sparrow is? <laughs> Jack Sparrow was a movie star. I mean, he's a pirate. The Pirates of the Caribbean. And one thing Jack Sparrow had that no one else had was compass that he carried around his neck. Now the difference with this compass, can anybody tell me which one north is from here? It's very confusing. That's right. You got it right. I would have said it was that way. And some would have said that way and we know. But this compass will always point north. And your compass is Unless it's close to, I found out that iPads will mess up the compass really bad. Or telephones, because it's got something in it and it throws it off. But most compasses always will point north. But Jack Sparrow's compass was a little different. What was his compass, what would his compass point to? Does anybody can tell me? We sang about it just a second ago. His design. His design. Whatever he desired in his heart. That compass will point to. And today, tonight, I want to just preach to a little, just a little bit. What is your desire? What is your compass really pointing to? Is it pointing toward God, or is it pointing to the desires of your heart? Your, our desires of our heart should be pointing to God's work, and that's what David was talking about. I want to go your, I want to go the course that you have for me, not my course, but God's course. Too many times. We use the course that that our heart, our not maybe not our heart, our flesh desires. Just like Jack Sparrow, you know, his desire was what a bottle of rum. It was. That was what he. That's what he loved more than anything. It's, you know, he could do this and it would point to the bottle of rum or whatever he loved. Treasure, whatever. And so many times in life that we do the same thing. Even though as, as we're Christians, as we're walking the path, as we're walking the course, look at David. You know, he, he stumbled. 
one time and looked at his balcony window. His desire changed from what it was supposed to be going to. Just that simple, so quick. We can stumble if we don't keep the course, if we don't keep the path, if we don't follow God's word, if we don't follow his direction. It can go so fast that we can get us off course so quick. We've seen ministers, we've seen men, men and women of God fall because what happened? Because their, their desire changed. Their compass got all mixed up. You know, we all have, most of us have telephones now. I've, uh, this is an iPhone, but most phones, most phones have a compass. Now look what my compass is doing. What is it telling me to do? What is it telling me to do? It's telling me to get it. I have to calibrate it so it'll start working. Sometimes our compasses get off spiritually. I'm talking spiritually compasses. And we have to do exactly what we had. I just had to do. I have to rotate. I have to, I have to do something. I have to get back on my knees. I have to start praying more. I have to do something more. I have to do something to get myself back in focus. And I got my direction back right. But like King David, he was not supposed to be where he was at that time when he, when he fell with Bathsheba. The Bible says that he was supposed to be with the, he was kings. He was supposed to be in war. He was, wasn't supposed to be at home. He's supposed to be doing what kings are supposed to be doing. It wasn't in bed. He wasn't. He kind of lazied out. But really what I think happened was too many times we, like David, this could be his balcony. He knew what time of the day she bathed. Why? Because he walked by that many times. And maybe the first time, second time, you know, he just glanced. Looked at the clock. Maybe that clock with the sun now. <laughs> time makes. <laughs> but he knew time what she did. Because he she did it every day at a certain time. That was her pattern. That was, you know, we get the habits. And David knew. And instead of going to war like he was supposed to with other kings, he stayed home that day because he knew she was going to be down there. He knew her husband would be gone. What happened? His compass got all messed up. His desire got going this direction instead of doing what he's supposed to be doing as a king. And the same thing can happen as Christians. I'm not saying we're going to fall into sin like David did. But I'm saying, that, but it can be just as bad. You know, sin is sin. Yeah. There's, no, there's no degrees of sin like the world would love to tell you. You know, a little sin, a little, you know, how many remember the little, your friends when you're young, a little white lie. A little white lie. Yes, it will. A little white lie will, will keep you out of heaven. A little this, a little bit of that. You know, I remember in the Bible talking about uh, there's two, a uh, family, a husband and wife in the New Testament. They sold the property. Sold it for an X amount of money. And they went to give money to get the other tithes. And, and they went to the apostles and they said, well, you know, they sold it for Say a hundred thousand, but they told everybody else that's only sold for seventy-five, yeah. and they only paid tithes for seventy-five. They gave it, and they said, "Why are you lying to the Holy Ghost?" They thought they could get by with it. Now I'm not here to take some tithing or offering, but that just popped in my head. <laughs> but we should go. But a lie is a lie. A sin is a sin. Amen. 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 And a trip is a trip. You know, we're going sometimes, but we've got to do, we've got to make sure, we've got to go, hey, make sure our focus is right, our purpose is right. And how do you do that? You get right with God. That's what we have to do. I have to do that sometimes. I've got to say, oh, God, am I focusing? Am I doing right? i got to get right with God. Does that make me a, a, a sinner? No. It makes me normal. It makes me a human. Amen. And it makes me think, okay, i got to get back down on my knees. i got to fall before God. You know, whatever it takes. You know, Brother Nurse, I don't know how long you've been, you've been married. 
some years. I've been married. By, uh, we just had a 43rd anniversary. I thought we was, we was married when we was that age. <laughs> no. But you know, I know. Been married long enough. You, you don't get there. You understand? <laughs> we don't think the same way they do. <laughs> I still don't understand. Never will. Never understand women. But you know, I do know one thing. If I make a mistake, she'll let me know. If I, if, I, if I do something wrong, you know what I do? I look and say, honey, I don't really know exactly what I did wrong, but <laughs> please forgive me. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to get my course. I'm trying to get my yes. compass back right with my wife. Get my marriage back on. Yes. So many times we, we let things get in our way, and we get, we get our, our pride on both, both sides. We get a pride. I'm not gonna forgive him. I'm not gonna forgive her. And before too long, it gets to, it gets hardened, and we get and we, and we, we fall. We lose out. We lose out. But Jack Sparrow, you know, he his his compass always pointed to something that he he, he wanted and it wasn't right. So where today, tonight? Where's your compass pointing? Where is your desire? We sing about it. I confirmed my message when the, my desire is to the Lord. My desire is to the Lord. My desire is to love the Lord. My desire is to walk to walk toward the Lord. My desire is to, to do whatever you want me to do, Lord. My desire is whatever, you know, do this or do that. Don't let other people tell you your desire is different. Unless it's your pastor. You know, so many times, especially especially family members, will try will will be trying to do something for the Lord. And if they're not living for God, then they say you're all stuck, you're all you're, you're confused. What they're trying to do is get you going in another direction. They want to they want to mess up. They want to do exactly what this iPad will do. Now the north is that way, brother. Now the north is that way. Now it's back this way. But, but what happens, that what, that's what life happens, does to us sometimes. It, it throws things our way that tries to redirect, redirect, redirect sorry, our path to hell. But there's only one path in the river. And that path is narrow, but that path is true, and that path is going to lead us to God. The wide, wide is the path, but many go down, it's going to fall into destruction. I don't want to follow. We were going to the, the brother Joshua was taking me to uh, West Westfield. Yeah. Now up in Elgin, we don't have a Westfield. <laughs> we don't have anything like Westfield. We don't have, you know. Uh, he gave me his oyster card, and you know, when I, when I first came to London, they told me about oyster cards. I thought, who wants to eat oyster cards? <laughs> Is. I'm just going to go. But you know, I started thinking as we was going down that tube, and maybe you all thought the same way. You see all these people going one direction. I'm going, oh God. And I started getting sick. I almost got sick. Not crawl, I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. Oh, I don't want to be in this crowd. I don't want to be in this people that's going to hell. You know, they're, they're going the wrong direction. I want to be going the other direction. I don't want to be caught in this place. I don't want to be I want to get down on the knees and start praying for everybody. Start laying hands on everybody. Don't you know? You know, there's no, there's no message. I don't know if that's coming to me. There's no message. I don't know if you've ever heard it. Uh, uh, marching to hell. It's an old, old message. Messy. Back in the 40s, 50s, it's old. And then old brother Gibbons is the name. I have just popped in my head. He preached. And he said, the whole time he's preaching, he's doing this. What he's talking about people getting alone. You know, you, we go to like like the tomb, or we go to, we see people going to games, the football games, or going to wherever, and they get in these lines, these queues, and they're, and they're all in line. They're just, they, you know, they don't understand. They're just kind of going, you know, where you go? You know, I don't know where I'm going. 
I'm just following I'm in the kingdom. I'm just following the kingdom. But they don't all understand where they're going. The covenants is all mixed up. And we don't got we don't have to get into that line. We need, need to be careful not to get in that line. Make sure your compass is straight. Make sure your, your way is right. Make sure your, your doctrine is sound. Uh, these ladies are talking about different things this before church, and you know, and they're up there preaching to each other. They're talking about God, and you know, they need to do this. And, need, and, what, and that's good because what they're doing is confirming the word. They're making sure they're straight now. Because it won't take just one little slip. Sister, yeah, go ahead and do what you want. No, don't, don't follow after that. You know, something like cutting your hair and all that. Do this and do that. You know? No, you don't. You, you know, stay the course. The Bible says, David says, stay the course. I want to stay the course and guide me. Guide me down the road of your commandments. Yeah. He's saying, I want to stay this course. How, cause, how come David say that? Because he remembers. Yes. He remembers. Yes. You know, one thing is the advantage of being a preacher. We get to use our experiences. You know, it's not bragging. I'm not happy what way I, you know, the other night I talked about almost going to prison. I'm not happy about that. I'm not, not I don't say that to, to brag. I'm, it's, I'm ashamed of it. I'm ashamed of the things. And to finish my story, I didn't have to go to prison. I didn't finish that story. I didn't have to go. God, he, he saved me from that. You know, I was telling Brother Nurse, I've got to finish this. Just a little part. My wife and I finally came back together. We were separated a little bit. And I'm just spitting all over you right now. I'm going to spit all over you right now. Look how the are going. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I sat in the back. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, we, we was in our house. And I was getting ready to... I was, I was looking for a lawyer, somebody to help me fight, not fight, but just help me save my, my skin. It's really what I was looking for a lawyer. And because I was looking like I was going to have to go to prison. And we stand there and look through the phone book and all that, trying to find a lawyer. You know, you want somebody that's, well, you trust, but you know, how do you pick a lawyer? You don't know them. Well, they don't know you. so. You put your life in their hands as a total stranger. But I was sitting there, standing there, and my wife, I said, I don't know what to do. Now, I wasn't a Christian, but my wife was. My wife said, honey, come here. And she said, I'll share. And she said, let's pray. And for me to do this, because I, I was a macho man, men don't cry. I was taught, men don't cry. Men don't bow down to their wives. But I, I was ready to. She was sitting there, and I laid my head in her lap. Thank you, Jesus. And she laid her hand on me. We just did a simple prayer. I couldn't tell you what to pray. Just say, God help us. We need help. We need direction. And as soon as it wasn't a, it wasn't a thirty minute prayer, it wasn't a hallelujah, blah, 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 get up. Prayer is just a simple little prayer. And I got up. You know, I wasn't crying or anything. I just got up. As soon as I got to my feet, the phone went. I looked up, picked it up, and said, yes, sir. He said, this is the district attorney, which is a judge, that you would call here. And he said, uh, Mr. Coker, he said, I need you to come here. He said, but you know what? I don't want you to, you don't need a lawyer. You don't need anybody. You and your wife come, and we're going to work this thing out. Amen. That's God. Amen. 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 And I praise God, it wasn't too long after that. I finally said, okay, I surrender. I went to the church. It didn't happen the first time. It didn't happen the second time. The third time I went to church. First time I started back at this church. I sat at the very back. I wanted to just be away from that up here. The second time I sat in the middle. The third time I sat on the second. God was strong. I couldn't yes. tell you why he preached, what happened, but God was moving on my heart. I remember I had these big old glasses, you know, back in those days, big old thing. I remember sitting there and all of a sudden, I couldn't stand it any longer. I couldn't stand it. My compass needed to be fixed. And I was still like, 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 I was still Like this for three hours. And after about an hour, 
going numb. You can't move. And people spitting all over you. You know, don't care about snot. I didn't care. Only after a while I said, God, I'll do whatever. And, I, and this is what I promised God. I said, God, I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll go wherever you tell me to go. I will say what you want me to say. I promise. And I've held up to that promise. I don't hold to promises too well, but I've held that promise to God. That's why I'm here, right? But, now this is funny. This is, I said, but God, please give me my legs back. <laughs> God loves us. Amen. He has a sense of humor. Because he probably laughs every time he looks at us. Those guys. I made them. What am I saying today? Check your compass. Check, make sure your course is straight. Make sure you're, you're going the way that you should be going. Going the way that, that God wants you to go. You know, if he tells you to go this direction, go witness to somebody, go witness to him. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Because I, I had, we, Joshua and I stood out here today. I went on the other side of the street. She on the other side of the street was handing out tracks, you know. And I forgot how it is to be rejected. Oh, have you created our church? You know what I'm talking about. We talk, no. You know, you're, you're the devil. You're whatever, you know. You're one of those Jehovah's Witnesses, whatever. You're something that, you know. But you know what? I did it because, because that's what God wanted us to do. Amen. You know, God will honor us. But, but did the flesh want to? No. My compass. Well, I had to go, okay, I'm going to go over there. I'm going to hang out tracks. I don't care what people say. I'm going to hang out tracks. I'm gonna go feed the. I'm gonna go with you tomorrow. I'm gonna go out there. I'm looking. I am really looking forward to that. To 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 pray with people. I haven't done that in a long time, brother. Nurse, be truthful. I haven't done that. Yeah, I've taken out tracks, but so, to do that to the to the degree that you're doing, you might think that I'm coming down here to minister to you. You're you're ministering to me. You really am. To see excitement, to see desire. It's hard to get a work going. I know it is. And I, and I admire the stick to of the saint and the, to follow the pastor. You know, because why? Because his compass, he's got his compass straight. He's, got, he's following the course. And what's really nice to see is that his saints and people behind him are following right behind him and saying, okay, I'm with you. I'm holding you up. There's times, I'm, I'm, there's times that this man of God, you know what he needs? And I know that he's got good people. He needs somebody to go, Pastor, I'll hold you up. I'll hold, I'll hold your hands up. I know you've got your little time. I'll hold you up. I'll hold you up. I'll, hold you up. I'll, you up. I'll praise with you, God. I'll praise. How many times have you prayed for your pastor? I know you prayed for him at night and all that, but how many times has he been up there and all of a sudden you need to go and pray and say, oh, I pray for you. I said, Sister, I'll pray for you. He takes his wife, his son, his children. Because why? I tell you what, it's hard sometimes to keep your course. Sometimes because. Some people might say something. Some people might be negative. Some people might say, hallelujah. We need to hold our course. We need to, we need to follow what God wants us to do. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Some of you want to strum this guitar or whatever. I just feel like, I feel like we need to, to maybe, maybe our compass has been too close to our, our phone. Maybe our compass has been too close to a magnet. Maybe our compass has been someplace else where it shouldn't be. You know? I know I'm talking to saints. I know I'm talking, but you know, we, again, we need to sometimes have a, have a course direct, correction. We need, we're heading, we're, we're heading to, our, to a, a nice word. We're heading to, heading to someplace that we shouldn't be in. We're not listening to God. You know, listen to the pastor, but you know what? You need to, you need to be, you need to be listening to God. You need to make sure your, sure your course is straight, because he, God knows what's around the corner. He knows what lies ahead. He knows where you're heading, and the only way we can do it, we've got to follow after God. And you like that? God, give me a course straight. Correction if I need a portion. Let's worship. Lord Jesus, we love you, Lord. How about this altar's over? If you like to come, let's worship. Let's just, I tell you what, let's just make this a house of an altar of worship today. Hallelujah. Jesus, I need you, Lord God. I need a course of correction, God. I need you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord God, right now.
child falls. And they go, oh, I stepped on, you know, whatever they did, they scraped the knee. And remember those days when they come crying, oh, I want to kiss my, you know, they want you to kiss the elf again. You know? We have a Lord that does the same thing. He will pick us up. So many times that people hold stones and they look and they're ready to stone you for something. 